begin this Sunday morning with the breaking news of an indictment of former President Trump by President Biden's Department of Justice over the handling of classified documents. It's the first time in the 246-year history of the United States that a former president is facing federal criminal charges, as well as unprecedented that the Justice Department is prosecuting the sitting president's former and potential re-election opponent. Trump has been charged with 37 counts, including willful retention of national defense information, obstruction of justice, and providing false statements. The 45th president has been ordered to appear in federal court in Miami this upcoming Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Here's President Trump's response. Only Donald Trump is indicted and they take one charge and they turn it into 36 charges. You saw that. Everybody was amazed. I'm an innocent man. We will prove that again. Seven years of proving it. And here we go again. Very unfair. News of the indictment came just hours after the House Oversight Committee finally got to see that uh, document, FBI document, alleging a criminal scheme tying then-Vice President Joe Biden to bribery. The document reportedly claims both Joe and Hunter Biden received $5 million apiece from an executive from Burisma for what one source called pay to play. Joining me right now with more on all of this is Wisconsin Republican Senator Ron Johnson, who has been at the forefront in the investigation into President Biden and his family's business deals. Senator, good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining me. Morning, Maria. Your reaction to the indictment against President Trump? Well, when you consider the exoneration of Hillary Clinton, when you consider the fraudulent uh, and corrupt investigation on Russian collusion, which was a complete lie and the FBI knew it was, uh, you put all these things together, uh, the FBI, the Department of Justice interfered in the 2016 election, in the 20, 2020 election, and here we go again. There's going to be interfering uh, in the 2024 election. They already have. Uh, what a mess. Um, you know, obviously, President Trump's going to have a ability to defend himself, uh, but will he be able to defend himself quickly, or is this going to drag on and on and on? So it, it, it's, it's hard not to be suspicious of what the Department of Justice is doing once again. As you mentioned, uh, the investigation of Hunter Biden has been dragging on for years. Uh, they're able to wrap up this uh, investigation very rapidly. Uh, in addition, they announce it pretty much the same day when uh, the details of the, the FBI uh, human, confidential human source was going to be revealed by members of Congress. And I won't steal the Congresswoman's uh, thunder here. But it's, it's, all, it's all suspicious, and it's, it's just, just a horrible mess. Well, what about the investigation into Hunter Biden? You've done so much work on that over the years. Where does that stand? We are going now on almost six years that the feds have been frozen on this investigation. They got that laptop when? In 2019? Correct. But they're investigating Hunter Biden as far back as uh, 2018. Uh, so th th this... Uh, investigations moving at a glacier pace. We have a whistleblower coming into our office saying that uh, U.S. Attorney Weiss is not have the resources to do a proper investigation. But what's well, interesting, uh, Maria, now that uh, this uh, FBI document's been revealed, uh, I've gone back and I've looked at the timeline. And first of all, you have to understand the Bidens, certainly Hunter, I think probably Joe Biden as well, knew exactly the type of people they were dealing with. Uh, Hunter's business partner, who's also on the board of Burisma, Devin Archer, is now a convicted felon. Uh, Patrick Ho, who Hunter Biden was uh, uh, paid a million dollars to defend against money laundering charges, uh, Hunter Biden called him the expletive deleted uh, spy chief of China. Uh, in, in terms of Burisma, that's what this uh, $5 million, or sounds like $10 million of, uh, of bribe money paid. Uh, this is all around Burisma and their uh, corrupt oligarch, uh, Mikola. Zolchewski. Uh, he, he was, uh, his assets were seized by, by uh, the UK in 2014, same time when uh, Hunter Biden and Devin were joining the board. Uh, 2015, he was declared, a f uh, officially declared a fugitive. That's when Andre, Sh or that's when Victor Shokin was hired as a prosecutor general. 2015 is, we'll find out, is, is when all this activity was going on with, uh, with the Bidens. 2016 is when uh, Shokin opened up investigation and within three months 
Shokin was fired, and that's about the same time that uh, Vice President Biden was talking to Poroshenko and demanding the, the firing of Shokin. So it, it's, it's incredibly corrupt. It's incredibly dirty. Uh, the Bidens knew exactly the type of people they were dealing with, but the mainstream media has by and large ignored it. But it is interesting that the New York Times, at uh, the tail end of uh, December uh, 2016 or 2015, was actually writing a story about the Bidens and this corrupt oligarch, but then they pretty well dropped the lead. It feels like uh, American citizens are on to this corruption, even though the mainstream media refuses to report on the, the most serious charges leveled at a president uh, ever, in my view, the, uh, the, the influence peddling. I, I heard from Lee Carter this morning, the pollster, and she says this most recent poll that she's looking at has corruption and crime. Uh, at the number one and number two issues for voters right now. So do you think that people understand th that uh, part of this is political? We're going to get into the details of the indictment coming up with Alan Dershowitz, but you say it is political. Well, I, I think certainly almost about half of America believes that. But again, the, the complicit, compliant, corrupt media, they're not covering this thing honestly. And, you know, Maria, I also have to point out, you talked about uh, precedent breaking. You know, President Ford decided it was best for America not to pursue prosecution against President Nixon. President Trump pretty much made the same decision, decided not to pursue any kind of prosecution of Hillary Clinton. You know, Joe Biden could have made the exact same decision, but he didn't. He allowed a SWAT raid on a, a very secure residence of President Trump uh, over federal records, even though he was holding classified records himself. So that record uh, issue should have been handled civilly. We never should be even in this place. But this, these are decisions that President Biden made. As much as he's probably lying about not, interf not talking to the Justice Department at all, uh, that's pretty hard to believe when you understand how many other lies President Biden has told the American public. Well, it's just extraordinary. Do you think this impacts President Trump's campaign and his ability to, to run? He's still the number one uh, in the lead in terms of the GOP contenders for 24. How, how could it not impact yeah. it? Uh, you know, not only is just the legal maneuvering going to distract from him, but this is going to be the lead story in the mainstream media until this case is decided. So I would certainly hope that uh, this trial would take place quickly, that President Trump can defend himself, and we can get this behind us. But what I'm hearing from legal experts is this, this trial may not even occur till after the 2024 election. That would be a travesty. We, wow. we need... We need a swift determination of this case, and we need to move on to a campaign. All right. I think they said that they are moving toward a speedy trial, but who knows? Senator, thank you. Ron Johnson joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. Have a good day.